eDelivery building block. Uh, eDelivery is part of the EADAS regulation. It's a uh, service under a European regulation. Uh, within our e-document exchange lifecycle, uh, this service will be used to exchange documents between counterparties. And uh, the main idea behind the delivery, uh, why European Union began to uh, uh, b build this legal framework and technical infrastructure uh, for the delivery, because email do not have ability to give legally binding uh, evidence of delivery messages between the par par counterparties. And on this slide, I call these scenarios bad scenarios because very often we need to uh, ha have a legally binding uh, uh, evidence for that email was sent from government to citizens or businesses and vice versa when businesses would like to send some data to court uh, or to the government and this data <laughs> yeah, uh, is very critical and sensitive. So within the European Union they assume uh, three ba main uh, business cases but e-delivery is not limited to them. You can exchange any data um, with e-delivery, even if you would like to do so, you can build X-Road like um, integration between uh, uh, internal uh, government registries using e-delivery as a standard protocol and not vendor specific implementation. So X-Road, it's an uh, Estonian uh, integration layer that gives you ability to uh, exchange machine readable data uh, between uh, registries with, uh, within the country. And e-delivery as a, uh, a European wide regulation uh, suggests that uh, data can be exchanged between governments and between countries with the same level of trust and it's one of the crucial components uh, of building this digital trust within the EU. So the first domain is consumer protection, when some government bodies uh, should uh, accept complaints from the citizens of businesses. And it's a typical case where with email you can simply delete uh, the email and it w would be rather hard to prove that this email was created and sent to the government bodies. The next step is e-invoicing. Uh, one of the huge uh, steps within the European Union when they currently force uh, countries on the European Union to process machine-readable invoices in e-procurement scenarios on all levels. So right now the all government body obliged to apply uh, to receive e invoices and process them and this why in this scenario when some uh, government body would not like to pay right now uh, they, they also can go to the huge bureaucracy procedures but e delivery will prove the, d the delivery of invoices and uh, uh, timelines for paying this invoice will be enforced. And the last one uh, is exchange of claims in court when we need also a very highly restricted areas when this uh, data is critical and we need evidence of sending and receiving uh, data between the counterparties. Uh, so it's also uh, critical to understand that uh, EADAS regulation have a legal framework uh, under the e-delivery services uh, uh, and this regulation also uh, have an uh, uh, article that defines what electronic register delivery service means and uh, idea i will read it through because it's very important to understand the legally binding uh, framework because uh, technical approach as we see further uh, evolves and but legal uh, de description of the service will still stay the same so uh, the registered email 
registered uh, delivery service will, will deal with data that will be sent and received uh, using the service and will give the evidence in legal proceeding solely that uh, in electronic form. So it's very important that um, uh, providers of registered delivery service will uh, give third parties legally pressing solely evidence in electronic form because right now for example in ukraine when you deal with electronic document uh, court often wants a paper evidence that this electronic document uh, is legal have legally binding approach to them uh, it and this why uh, it's not applicable in digital trust that some evidence will have a paper counterparty and uh, also uh, other parts state that uh, this uh, registered delivery service needs to be uh, to meet uh, government requirements uh, for the qualified electronic registered delivery service uh, within the DAS regulation we have advanced no, we have non-qualified and qualified uh, services and the main difference is that qualified services have by default uh, legal, uh, legal effects for all co counterparties so they trusted by default non-qualified services can be trusted but it is within the judgment of the counterparties who will deal with non-qualified mm, services and the second part of this article uh, deals uh, that with uh, requirements to the uh, registered delivery services in terms of the data so the data that will be exchanged within the service must have a um, presumption of integrity uh, so there, there will be no changes to the data that will be exchanged uh, using this uh, service and uh, also critical that we have identified sender and identify addressee uh, of the recipient uh, within these ser services so there is no way um, uh, to exchange data between an 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 unknown identities and this identities might must be identified within the service so uh, idea behind this legal infrastructure uh, to build a highly reliable and trust post service so right ra ra <laughs> like right now we use a uh, post to exchange critical documents in paper form the e delivery use the same approach and give the same uh, level of uh, integrity to their uh, messages that um, paper post give us currently back to e delivery standards uh, unfortunately right now there is no uh, european commission implementing decision that explicitly uh, state uh, their requirements for the e-delivery standards uh, but right now uh, there is a couple approach uh, to deal with it so the main um, uh, approach that Euro Com European Commission uh, tries to push and uh, uh, invest a lot of efforts in st uh, using standards approach is uh, uh, ESN S4 profile so this profile was built uh, for uh, e-delivery uh, building block and this profile gives you an envelope for the data that you will send between counterparties so idea the same as in the paper post you have your letter your, your payload this payload will go to the envelope and then this envelope will be exchanged between counterparties via postman train car or any transport so the same architecture is here so you have your, your data you have your envelope in uh, a, a as4 format but uh, other formats are also applicable and here we have a uh, uh, distinguish between technical implementation and legal framework and then uh, this envelope also can be uh, sent to the counterparty with uh, other 
means and there is also uh, a lot of <laughs> means that can be used to do this uh, but uh, ESA ACE4 it's a profile so it's a not a standard that details that give details around all, all of uh, payload of the envelope because this profile is based on electronic business messaging service that was standardized by OASIS uh, um, consortium and this consortium already uh, made a huge work by standardizing their uh, OASIS eBay XML messaging service as ISO standards. So we can say that uh, S4 profile is a profile of international standard. And also our definition uh, have a um, notion of identified senders. So in the post, in, in the physical world, post uh, is bind to the physical address of sender or, or receiver. In digital world, there is an, a lot of uh, entities. Uh, so we need a way to deal with identifying them. One of the approaches, and currently there is two uh, valid approach to do this, is to use uh, ISO 6523 standard. It's a generic standard, it's not bind to the e-delivery standard. It gives ability to their uh, national uh, standardization body to register schema for identification of entities. So uh, this approach gives ability to globally register uh, your unique uh, schema under which you can register any entities. For example, if you have your uh, tax uh, number for any entity in your country, you can uh, prefix this uh, tax number with uh, schema that will be registered un under this uh, ISO 6523 standard, and this it, it will be unique address of your uh, receiver or sender within in delivery infrastructure and here you can use different approach but the latest one approach that um, uh, was uh, developed in this year so this ATN uh, standards 30 118 and 53 32 was published in this year and they assume that unique identification of recipient and sender will be done by our standard email approach when you have email at domain and the registered email, electronic email will have domains within with users so they try to make it delivery as a let's say plug-in to existing uh, email infrastructure that will give uh, you the same uh, li like and feel uh, for the email, but uh, will give this additional legally binding approach that will uh, that will give you ability to prove sending and receiving of the emails between counterparties, and this evidence will be legally binding. And this framework also will have part three and part four that will define the formats of the uh, envelope and interoperability uh, profiles for these uh, envelopes. So right now there is a huge work uh, will be done within the standardization framework, but also under the standards of building yet delivery block uh, developer team will implement these changes into the next uh, versions of the uh, e-delivery uh, software. So, uh, because we have a lot of uh, components, uh, we need to understand that you can choose a lot of uh, a lot of components within your e-delivery infrastructure but uh, the envelope of the email of the message must be uh, standard and this why in this table we try i'm trying to show you the difference between existing infrastructures to exchange invoices it's a people papal uh, access point uh, that uh, initially was developed for in in 
in the business environment to exchange electronic invoices between businesses. And uh, now uh, e-delivery and e-invoicing self-building blocks uh, uh, currently use PayPal approach to exchange invoices in public procurement. Also, there is e-codex um, infrastructure to exchange uh, legal electronic documents between European Union members, and they also use e-delivery to do th so. And also, you can implement your e-delivery service to exchange uh, within the government, between the government and uh, citizens and businesses, any electronic data with uh, legally binding evidence of sending and receiving this uh, data. Uh, for for corner model, uh, we will uh, talk about this uh, later, but the idea that you can have one e delivery service for the whole country that will process all the data and all exchanges between all the, um, all the uh, members. Uh, but uh, uh, the main idea behind using uh, S4 profile within your even single uh, single uh, access point for e-delivery that you can change the vendors who will provide this implementation because uh, the interface and envelope that will be used to send data between uh, parties will not change. Implementation of the software will change and may change. This why using standards approach um, uh, allows uh, government bodies to protect themselves from the vendor lockup when you need to pay the same vendor money to support existing uh, proprietary system. Uh, so the envelope, it's a S4 profile, and uh, S4 profile uh, took as an experience of the PayPal integration within the EU and extend it. And the next level of uh, integration approach. So it um, uh, <laughs> very critical to uh, understand that it delivery self building block do not give you a fancy Gmail, Google Mail like interface uh, to send emails between counterparties. I will show you. It gives you a uh, component that will generate evidence of sending receiving messages between parties. But you need uh, build connectors on top of this um, component that will deal with integration with existing IT systems or will develop web interface uh, to your, your end users so that they can use this uh, self e delivery block to send um, uh, e delivery messages between them, between parties that will use it. Also, discovery model. Uh, as there can be a lot of e-delivery service providers and right now in the latest standard for e-delivery trust service list um, uh, with list of uh, qualified uh, registered email delivery services will be a dynamic discovery model so idea behind this that you, that using list of trust list from European Commission for example in European Union uh, can be used to discover e-delivery services all over the Europe and then third party parties that will be part of this list of trust lists and security model uh, when you need to, to build explicit trust or not explicit trust between parties who operate e-delivery access points and uh, uh, four corner model that use use behind the e-delivery uh, infrastructure within the Euro Europe, but not within the legally binding framework of EADAS regulation. Idea behind this that we have access points, and this access point uh, was implemented as a self e-delivery block, and this access point will be part of uh, trust service provider TSP who need to go through the qualification procedure to make this access point uh, qualified registered electronic delivery service. And then when trust service provider has API, different connectors, 
uh, they can sell uh, access to these connectors to the backend system uh, so for the other third-party providers who will uh, connect to the trust service provider to send emails to other counterparties so this why uh, it uh, uh, there is need to understand that only access point will be subject for the qualification not connectors not the backend only access point and because we need uh, to mm, um, add a dynamic um, search for the other access points for example if we will be we, if we will build our inter instant partnership uh, e-delivery ecosystem so each country will have couple or one e-delivery service and we need to find a dynamically which e-delivery access point currently is uh, in operation within instant partnership countries we will use sml uh, registry that uh, gives you ability to find all e-delivery uh, access point uh, within Eastern partnership and this SML registry will have e SMP it's a definition of their configuration of access point because there is a lot of uh, point that you can uh, configure within your e-delivery for example, you can uh, use only HTTP protocol to post uh, e-delivery messages, or you will use ActiveMQ uh, queue to exchange uh, e-delivery as as for en envelopes and etc. This SMP file will give you explicit uh, definition of capabilities of access point, and this why. Uh, sending this access point will know how to send the data to the receiving access point and this is a more detailed uh, um, picture of the latest standard uh, on e-delivery so we have uh, e-delivery agent we have message store that temporarily stores the messages and upon receiving uh, it will or, or sending it will delete it fr from a message store it has evidence provider so on every action creation of message sending information receiving information um, um, message uh, and uh, reading the message uh, the evidence provider will provide evidence to the sender that all these four actions were done or part of them were done so we have uh, evidence repos repository because evidence will be stored within uh, e-delivery provider and user directory as you mentioned we need to identify the end users and we have a shared infrastructure as I told uh, earlier uh, example of this shared infrastructure is list of trust list from the European Union that suggests that we uh, can search for e delivery providers using this trust list list of trust list from European Union so demonstration uh, as I told you uh, we have a four corner model so on the left side we have sender uh, on the right side we have uh, receiving party it's a both uh, axis points that use Domibus uh, software. The Domibus software is an open source software uh, developed on the Ceph e-delivery building block initiative and uh, is fully uh, uh, the software implements the H4 profile. So on the left side uh, I have a uh, sample business scenario. In this scenario we will send a message from the blue uh, access point to the red access point we'll see uh, receive acknowledgement and uh, after receiving acknowledgement we will try to send the message uh, back to the blue but we will fail uh, on this and let me show the results of mm. So right now at 10.30 uh, we uh, send a, a message 
this message was uh, acknowledged uh, from the second access point this uh, message here here we have identifier da94 and the same message here so this message uh, was sent from the blue to red uh, uh, idea that the red access point on the receiving of this message send acknowledgement this message was received after getting this message from the red uh, access point this message was deleted so there is no message was stored on the uh, e-delivery access point and uh, after uh, reading the message, deletion of message on the red, this uh, notification that the message was read also was sent to the blue provider. And the failed uh, message we tried to send back from the red to the blue, and this message was failed to send, and this is why we are waiting for the retry. So if we will have some issues with some uh, counterparties between uh, uh, the connection, if, uh, if we have a connection issues, uh, this um, software is capable of retrying the m uh, sending message in bank to the provider. So it was a quick demo. Uh, 